Moving along to stem cells. Tell us about the stem cells that we use in Circadia products, why we love them and why everybody has to have it. Sure. So categorically stem cells, this is a question that comes up oftentimes. We've taught classes entirely on stem cells. And I think you have to categorize or put them in two groups. You have plant-derived stem cell technology, right? And you have to say that it's stem cell technology because it's important to notate that there are no living stem cells in any product, no matter what the source, whether it's plant, human, or animal, there's nothing in a product that could sustain the life of a human stem cell or a plant stem cell. And in fact, we as skincare manufacturers go through great lengths to make sure that there's nothing living inside the product. And when the popularity of stem cells came onto the market, there was a lot of misinformation about that. So um, a little bit of a disclaimer, as soon as we start talking about stem cells, there's nothing alive inside the product, no stem cells actually in the product. What we're dealing with is extracts from what were once living stem cell cultures. And that's what we use in, in Circadia skincare products. We don't use any human or animal derived stem cells for a number of reasons. Um, in Europe, where we have a lot of distribution, uh, a, a lot of um, clientele, you're not allowed to use human stem cell derived technology at all. Um, what you're trying to get when you use human stem cell technologies are the growth factors that are part of these cultures. And the sources come from everything from um, umbilical cord stem cells, bone marrow, um, foreskin. There's a number of different uh, places that many manufacturers harvest them from. But the idea is that they grow these cultures and then they shred the stem cells and then uh, insulin-like growth factor, epidermal growth factor, vascular endothelial growth factor, those are all able to be extracted and then they end up getting put inside the product. And they do have some incredible benefits for the skin, but again, it's very loosely regulated here and banned in certain parts of the world where we have a lot of um, distribution. So plant stem cell technology, somewhat similar as far as how it's actually extracted from a stem cell culture, but completely different as far as what we're trying to achieve. So when you look at the different uh, plants that we're getting them from. The biggest one that came onto the market, I think it was like 2005, 2006, was the apple, uh, a specific type which was called Malus domestica. It grows in a very, very high altitude in Swiss Alpine peaks. And the story behind this was, there's a lot of um, antioxidant protection inherently in these apples because you can pick one and let it sit for six months, eight months, nine months, and it's as fresh as the day you picked it, right? You can bite into this apple and you know, the, the Swiss people like really build the story around this. Well, again, it's the antioxidant profile that's part of this apple. So of course, very, very scarce. You can't harvest these apples because there's not very many of them. So what some of these companies started doing is growing in lab conditions. They would take part of the growing plant, and in this case, it was the apple. They injure the tissue, right? They injure the apple and the apple starts to repair itself. And this is while it's still growing on the plant. It starts to repair itself and it grows a callus of stem cells. So after a couple days, that injured area in lab conditions, they'll remove the callus, right? They'll remove the callus of those stem cells and they'll put it in the medium that allows it to continue to grow. And it's usually a sugar-based compound called isomalt and it'll consume the, the isomalt and then after it's completely consumed, you have this really, really nice big culture of stem cells. At that point, they again, they homogenize and shred the culture, and then you're able to extract the metabolites that are growing within those stem cells. And most of the time, it's the same properties that you find in part of the plant. And it's interesting because again, we can go pretty far down the rabbit's hole, but there's also a, um, a green, if you will, element to this because most of the extracts that we use in the industry, there's a carbon footprint associated here. So they have to be harvested, they have to be extracted. Most of what we're talking about, when you look at the uh, portfolio of many of the suppliers, there's a scarcity to a lot of these things, right? There's not, there's limited supply. So you can grow as much of the stem cell culture as you want in lab conditions without having to grow normal agro methods, then harvest, and then create this carbon footprint. So a lot of the um, sales part of it has come from this whole concept. Um, but again, really when it comes down to us and the importance and, and, and what we focus on in skincare is the fact that we're able to take these extracts right, and pull from these stem cell cultures these incredible benefits, whether it's antioxidant, it can be collagen stimulating, it can be collagenase inhibiting. All of these different plants have these different uh, benefits and these different profiles of what they're capable of doing for the skin. 
What I want to also explain is that these plant stem cells are not designed to take the function of a human stem cell. I feel like a lot of naysayers or people that say don't use plant stem cells because you're not a plant or you're not an apple, so it's not gonna work on your skin. Well, that's an uneducated explanation of why we are actually using plant stem cell technology. Right? We're using it to get the benefit of the extract. It's the same reason you would use any other extract in a skincare product for any other reason. It's just a very, very different way of getting the functional compounds from that stem cell culture. Perfect. That's, th that's a two hour lecture <laughs> summarized into <laughs> about yeah. five minutes. Yeah.